At this time of the year, many Christian churches around the world celebrate a season of creation. It begins with the Feast of Francis of Assisi in early October and is a time to reflect on how well we're caring for the planet and the gifts of creation. And so it's appropriate that Bishop Ray and Bishop Harris have now chosen to speak out on behalf of the environment. Their joint statement is not unusual in this time of ecumenism, as the Anglican and Catholic churches have a modern history of joining together on particular issues. It's based on the belief that a faith dimension has an important contribution to make, and it also challenges the presumption that mega-business and politics have all the wisdom on any of these issues. The statement adopts the subtitle of Pope Francis's recent strong statement on the environment, Care for Our Common Home. And it adds Francis of Assisi's description of the planet as Sister Earth. The statement has two themes. Firstly, it sets out to affirm and commend the many people and organisations who day by day live their lives in caring for the planet. The secondly, it challenges us to add a faith perspective that the earth is a sacred gift entrusted to our care. Add it to our modern environmental challenges like climate change and the preservation of the Great Barrier Reef, like coal mining in the Galilee Basin, artesian water protection, land clearing and the loss of biodiversity. Further, like many Australians, the bishops are concerned that our air, our water, our land, our seas and their many resources are seen as entitlements for some to plunder. Our rich Christian faith tells us that our world, our cosmos, is a special gift to care for tenderly, not to spoil, not to plunder. Nor is it an entitlement for the few, but rather to share equitably. It's for the common good. Bishop Ray and Bishop Harris are also concerned about the clear lack of business ethics or morality in much of what is happening locally. Most of all, they're asking a glaring question. What type of world are we handing on to the next generation? Whatever the issue, our bishops, like Pope Francis, have a strong belief that this generation of people can find sustainable and just solutions to all of our environmental challenges. There's so much uh, uh, confusion at the moment, uh, so many stories being told, not just about what Adani's doing or not doing, but we actually want, wanted to not pick a fight with Adani. We wanted to present a holistic uh, statement that just didn't speak to the issue of uh, coal but we also wanted to speak about the world and the way that we treat one another so that's what the statement's all about of course Adani's part of the story the coal issue the, the planet the way we look after or don't look after the planet so the bishops uh, Bishop Bill and I are very very concerned about that particular aspect but certainly, just to reiterate, this is not a fight with Adani. It's, it's, an, it's an attempt to dialogue and to open up the debate so that the church's voice can be heard. As I said, lots of confusion, uh, lots of things being said at the moment about all sorts of things. Uh, the main uh, issue at the moment, it seems that Adani is going to bring, bring jobs to the, to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the to the area. And uh, I don't dispute that. but. We think in a way that that is short term, a couple of thousand jobs, you know, for 30 years. We would like to think that we can, uh, to put it crudely, walk and chew gum at the same time. So uh, realising that there are other ways, uh, solar power and all these kinds of things that are they're up and running in this part of the world already. So we just want to make sure that our most precious resources 
uh, for example, the great gift of the Great Barrier Reef, much of which has died or bleached, we are deeply, deeply concerned about what happens as we go forward. This mega, mega mining company uh, seem, well, even when I hear the word mega, it worries me because I've got this image in my mind of a huge scoop just saying like this is mine, this belongs to me. Is there much thought about the common good and, and this beautiful, beautiful world in which we live? We've got so many gifts that have been given to us by our Creator, our God, and we're standing here where we are right now. Just look around us, what beauty is here? So we are wanting to make a holistic statement we don't want to be in confrontation with anybody. We simply want to, on behalf of the Christian Church, particularly the Anglican Communion and ourselves, uh, to be able to say something of substance, uh, not to berate, but to enter into dialogue and to ask people to think about the future. Because the future is our future, and uh, we've got a responsibility as stewards to look after our common home. So if I could just sort of say that to you and to everybody else, uh, that, uh, that we're here to be part of a conversation. Yes, and I support that wholeheartedly. And uh, we want to add to the conversation. As Paul mentioned before, the earth is a gift to God from us, from a Christian perspective, and we need to use it wisely and well. The other thing I'd like to see is a bit of balance. Mm. And add to that, I grew up on the land in Victoria, and when I was a young fellow, my parents were paid money to clear the land so as we could farm. My brother's now running that farm and he's being paid by the Victorian government to plant trees. <laughs> now I know they're different day and ages but we need to look at balance and I take uh, Bishop Tim's comment about employment. Employment's important but also I don't want us to lose sight of the fact there's about 60,000 jobs with the Barrier Reef in terms of tourism, yep. in terms of science and research and we pray that that will continue to go on. So yes, jobs are important but we need to see that also with a sense of balance as well as with a sense of justice for the good and for the future uh, of our world. And. I'm a grandparent, Anglican bishops marry, but I also want to make sure that we leave the world in a better place, not only for my grandchildren, but for their children. Can I ask a question? Sure. Oh, so sorry. It's okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, what you were saying about um, just adding to the conversation, not wanting to pick fights, etc., mm. would you hesitate to call yourselves anti Adanis? I think the big picture calls us to more than making a statement about Adani per se. Our statement doesn't mention Adani. No, it mentions it the Galilee Basin. We wanted to broaden the conversation. I, I think the bishops, Bishop Bill and myself, want to be able to simply raise a few questions. There's so many things being said about Adani and about other things that, you know, where is the truth in all of that? We just want people to think and reflect uh, so I don't think it's up to us to be saying we are anti Adani and end of story. In fact, that defeats the purpose. We know Adani's on our doorstep. We know what Adani's proposing to do. But we, we do have deep concerns at the same time that, uh, that no one comes here to sort of almost, you know, rape and pillage uh, mm. this beautiful earth of ours and the implications of what perhaps may occur or may or may not occur with Adani coming, they're just too big. We, we, just, we just want to be able to, as I say, add to the conversation intelligently, not in a hysterical way. Our statement, by the way, was prepared before the election was called. So again, if I can make the point yes, yes, that so this is not a political in, uh, intervention, it's one that's timely. And at this time of the year, both of our churches are, are taking our cue from Francis of Assisi See, mm. very much. He is one that loved the earth, that actually called the earth his sister. And, and love creation. Now what a beautiful way for us to, to be inspired by someone like Francis of Assisi to give us that impetus and our reason to exist. So it's not a question of being anti Adani. No, I think it, for us, in the terms of the public conversation, we're raising the question, what is progress? Mm. 
yes. because people often throw in that word, what is progress? So it's not just about coal, it's also about morality. Yeah. It's about the way in which we treat other people and as well as the resources of the earth. So we want to look at it at a broader level than just uh, pick on a particular aspect. What is your um, your stance then on people who are taking the other side to the extreme in the form of protesting and changing mm. themselves from the etc.? Well, all of this is a very emotional time for everybody. You've got both extremes. You've got you know nasty things being sort of sent via text or whatever to the mayor and other politicians. <laughs> And and we th that just creates a a uh, an unpleasant situation for everybody. We we would call for calm, yeah. uh, because uh, they they're kind of I mean, you know when people people do get emotional, and they do all kinds of things because they are they are feeling disempowered, and that's why they do that kind of thing. Because I'm not condoning it, but people are very attached on both sides of the debate and I simply and I'm sure Bishop Bill would join me in this saying we want calm we want intelligent debate uh, and and surely as human beings we're entitled to respect each other's mm. views but but sort of but to to say to everybody settle down let's enter into the debate calmly and intelligently and also be open and listen and I think the same applies to the same sex debate at the moment. Sure. Uh, people are created in the image of God and we need to respect other people and it's not helpful to continually throw bricks and mortar at other people uh, because you don't agree with them. And so, yeah, and look, we do need, I think, in the society today to recapture the common good. Uh, there's a lot of individualism in society Yep. And I know we're individuals created in the image of God, but we also need to be aware of the common good and we need to promote that. Um, you talked before about jobs as well. Um, obviously you were mentioning that there are plenty of jobs that could potentially be taken away by a dying short-term mm -hmm. um, solution. But do you think people are ever going to be able to get past those when they start throwing out those big numbers saying we're going to go to five tens of thousands of jobs, do you think anyone's ever going to be able to, let me rephrase that, do you think everyone is going to be able to see past that, um, those sensationalist claims to see other people? Well, well, where is the truth? Like we've been given these numbers and, and really uh, there is great dispute about how many jobs are going to be created. I do think, look, we both agree that Townsville's economy needs a boost we know that goodness me if, if the townsville economy is boosted we our church our church does well and, and families are going to be fed and all that we understand that but but i would say to you that 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 we can we can throw out these figures i'm not sure how many of the, how, how these figures are tested we, we we're kind of led to believe these things but again we are seekers of the truth and in this conversation other facts might emerge Marriage. that mm. help us kind of determine, well, where is the truth in all of this? Is this going to be the saviour? Well, we've only got one saviour from our perspective, and that's Jesus Christ. Mm. Uh, he's the one that's going to help us and show us the way. Uh, in the interim, uh, humanity is limited in what it can do by itself, in our view. We need God there, and, uh, and so it's got to be prayer and action, I know. Mm. But to, 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 as we, are, we are Christian leaders who are seeking the truth. Would you kind of say that instead of just flat out believing, say the politicians or Adani or um, people who are very openly anti-Adani, um, but to look at all sides? Oh yes. I mean, politics is just one facet of mm. this whole debate. Yes. You know, you've got people like Paul and others who have spent a lifetime, and I know there's been a gap between 
uh, if you like, religion and science. But I actually think that's narrowing a bit today mm. where mm. science is enabling us to understand the world that God's given to us. Mm. And when we receive new information, we need to be able to look at that in a constructive yes. and a positive way and allow also that knowledge to challenge us. Yes. And I think that's, you talked before about people on this side or that side. It's often people take those extreme views when they don't allow themselves to be challenged uh, by new facts. It's very easy to make up your mind about something yes. and be simplistic about it. Yes. In fact, from a church point of view, we'd probably say they're fundamentalist mm. about mm. it. Mm. But fundamentalism breaks down after a while and we need to look at the new information that science gives us. Also, we need to look at the common good and the sociological aspects. Mm. I mean, talking about Adani and Cole, I still have concerns about fly in, fly out. I know that's an economic solution, mm. but when I see what it's doing to some families, yeah. That's new information that causes me to rethink about what is the nature of family and what is the best way in our communities to care for people. What's been the reaction um, from the people that you've sent the statement from the church and the people well, in the Well, quite frankly, we, uh, we have received so many emails uh, of support. Mm. I haven't received one yet. Uh, they may come and we've got to be prepared for that. Mm. People from around Australia have thanked us for, all of them have actually said thank you for your courage mm. and uh, and thank you for your contribution. So that's people of all faiths by the way, not just the Christian faith. Mm. And I'm sure Bishop Bill has got the same kind of messages. So far there's been an overwhelming support, a relief uh, that the bishops have of North Queensland have been able to say, look, this is where we stand, mm. this is our view. So I think the response has been overwhelmingly supportive and mm. we've got to be prepared for the other side, side as well. And, yeah. and we will be. But yeah. So we're not here to make war, we're people of peace, but we, we do feel that we need to make a contribution at this very, very uh, you know, difficult time, time in terms of finding out where the truth is. Is to be found yeah. and certainly we had an email from a jewish rabbi yeah indeed yeah. we did yes and we did uh, it was very um, we did. positive and uh called us courageous um i also from an anglican point of view i won't speak for bishop tim at this point but some anglicans down south have been surprised that something can come out of the north <laughs> so we're capitalizing on that <laughs> what, what can the common people do to make a difference well, I think they're, they're all part of the, the conversation. I mean, mm. the fact that they've received this statement helps inform uh, them. And, uh, you know, there are petitions and things like that that people have suggested. Um, I, I think letters to the editor. I think a conversation amongst family and friends, opening up the debate in a respectful way. All of us are part of this. Everyone needs is entitled to have an opinion. The leaders of the church are having their opinion spoken. We're, we're, we're articulating that now. So the people in the pews, I think, I think they're craving for some kind of leadership. Mm. There will be divisions amongst uh, those, of course. But again, if we can give them some uh, challenge, uh, and invite them to be part of the debate and to, and to enter into it, then I think that's perhaps all we can do. Yeah. yeah. And the other thing, I mean, one of the things that Robin and I, we go for a walk most days, we're starting to do is to take a bag with us and collect rubbish. Yeah. And uh, I'm surprised at the amount of rubbish around the river uh, we, near Aplands we're there but the other thing I was horrified yesterday to find that we don't know what we're going to do with all our recyclable rubbish you know that was new information for me yesterday and I've got to work with that and I've it, hopefully uh, not only me but the Anglicans along with other Christians will make a much greater positive make a, a contribution to what we do with recyclable things because it was mentioned earlier we have all these products made with recyclable ingredients but people aren't buying them so we've got to help to change the attitude as well it's one thing to talk the talk by putting out a piece of paper sure but how do the churches walk the talk 
Well, I think uh, Bishop Bill gave a very good example of that very simple example of doing what he said he just did and uh, with his wife and pick up some of the, the garbage that's around. Uh, look, you know, what do I do? Leave my car behind and, uh, and, uh, and uh, ride to work? Well, if I had the time, it'd be very good for <laughs> the environment and good for my health. Yes. Um, now, I don't necessarily have the time for that, but, you know, it, it's, 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 it's something that we've got to be open to. I think we've got to talk about it. I think one of the things that we've done in the Diocese of Townsville uh, in, our, in our schools, in fact, is to buy into solar energy. And in fact, we have in most of our schools now got solar panels. So in fact, we have put our money where our mouth is. We are, we are showing uh, the community what we can do. We, we actually have done this. So practically, the Diocese of Townsville, through its schools, has spent a lot of money in putting solar panels. And those, I was in Mount Isa a couple of days ago, and I was informed that 50% of that energy requirement in that part of the world in that school is being dealt with by solar energy. So why can't we explore that? And, uh, and I think, in fact, I happen to know, I learnt before I became Bishop of Townsville, that that information... Uh, in the initiative of our diocese and schools, the Vatican, Rome knows about it and they've commented on it. So this is very much Pope Francis's cup of tea. This is right up his alley. He would be applauding, I'm sure, what we are doing today. And also from an ecumenical point of view, if you don't mind me saying, to have the Anglicans and uh, Roman Catholics together making a joint statement just shows you how much we've got in common. Mm. Uh, we are, I am standing beside my brother, and, and we are dealing with this together, and uh, and I'm hoping that that message gets out, get out, gets out as well. That we're here, you know, together in our common home, sharing uh, this planet, enjoying it, and trying to make uh, a responsible contribution to it. Yeah, and I'd agree with Bishop Tim. In our Anglican schools, we're do doing the same with solar thing. Water's a big issue. Yeah, and, you know, it's a precious commodity, and one of the things with water is that um, certainly with young people and also those that are building homes, I think the church does have a responsibility to, to raise the question, do you have water saving devices, a, a shower rose that will only give yep. certain volume as opposed to, because we can't afford to just keep wasting water and sending it down the plug hole. Mm. Mm. And while mm. the statement wasn't election driven, mm. your suggestions or comments or hopes for, from our candidates? Well, uh, you know, you have an opportunity as, 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 a, as a leader now, as we both are, as leaders in, in this part of the world, to dialogue with politicians. And uh, in fact, I was at a function last night where there were three. Um, and let me say that the politicians will let you know um, uh, what they think. Uh, and that one has already done that. And, and I think it, it, at least if, if we hadn't have said anything, well, we wouldn't have spoken or communicated. So at least uh, if we can respect one another, there was no animosity there. There was just a chance for me to dialogue with one of our local leaders. Uh, and we did that uh, for very respectfully. And we, I think, uh, one of them said to me, we need to talk, Bishop. Well, there you are. Here's a politician mm. saying, we need to talk, Bishop. And I'm more, and Bishop Bill is happy to talk. We are happy to talk to our politicians. Again, we are leading, uh, we are leaders in this part of the world and it's it's just not the politicians that need to speak, it's the leaders of the Christian churches. Christian. So we are legitimately part of the debate and when politicians say to, to, to leaders uh, of the Christian churches, we need to speak, I actually think that's a, a great opportunity. It means the door's open and I'm happy to walk in that door. Yeah, and I think it's important that we not only encourage people to th speak, but also to think. And also, I think a part of our role is to help people to ask the right questions uh, as Christian leaders or leaders in any area. Because sometimes I think that's where the communication breaks down. People don't know what to ask. Mm, and mm, so I think mm. it's important that we pave the way mm. and help people to be able to ask questions that are going to lead to future thought and growth.